Yeah, the entire time just was always slowly going in Rival's favor. Like I said, Obey just didn't really have anything. Why couldn't Obey get involved? Well, once you get a bunch of burst assassins online, it's very difficult to try and slow them down because the issue starts to happen where you just automatically have one member, whether they die or not, if they're shoved out of the team fight, that's all that really matters. And that seemed to be the case for Obey. They just kept consistently having teammates get poked way too much. And with Rival having that raw, the sustain was too much for them to handle. It was ultimately just a lot easier for Rival to just keep pushing into Obey. And they're just left on the retreat because the only real form of sustain from them was you got like Sobek heal and uh, Sylvanas <laughs> heal. Like that doesn't really do much for the whole team. Yeah, for sure. A little bit, uh, a little bit lackluster there. As far as our band's concerned, we're taking a look at Giannis and Kamazots coming out from Obey Alliance, and Thoth will be one of the bands for Team Rival. They do have a secondary one coming out in just a moment. Looking at Obey Alliance for the first pick, after we see Rival's band of Daji, where do you expect Obey to go from here? For Obey, there's still Kakolin on the table. That's been a pretty prioritized pick so far in Season 5 for a lot of these SPL teams. Whether they want to flex it for support role or take it for the solo, it does seem to be the go-to god in Season 5. Yeah, for Team Rival, I want to see a Nemesis here. Uh, I think Nemesis is just strong overall, but I think Nemesis does really well against Kakolin specifically. Uller will be chosen by Team Rival. Again, a flex character can be played by Vote or Wolfie here for Team Rival. One more selection for the Purple Squad. And they're gonna go with a Cerberus. No reason, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Kallus is such a commanding performance on this Cerberus being a huge factor in why so many of those team fights kept going in the right direction for Rival. Love the Nuwa pick. I, this is so, Nuwa is a character that I, I've liked for a while. She's got some obvious issues when it comes to uh, early game damage, is certainly not her, her prowess, but the ultimate works really nicely and a uh, little bit of love she's had. Soul Gem, really important on this character. Izanami out of nowhere. You're the hunter girl, talk to me about it. I wonder if this is gonna be an Atalantis bro, Izanami. That seems like something that Ataraxia might just do. And Izanami being able to command so much clear pressure. The laning phase is what Obey is trying to keep in their favor this time around. In game number one, they were kind of struggling because when you throw a bunch of assassins, the best part of the match for them is always going to be that early game phase. And having an Izanami should help deter a little bit of that laning pressure that Rival might have been looking for off of this Uller because with that Raw being locked away, I can kind of anticipate that to be a vote Uller yet again. Well, I like the Raw here for Team Rival. Like you said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Team Rival picked the healer, and because of that, they're going to ban out two of the anti-healers that come to mind. Sir Ket has the anti-heal on her ultimate, and so does Odin locking people in, in the ring. Obey Alliance are going to say no to two junglers, Hunbats and Nemesis. Just uh, very powerful assassins there. So Team Rival still have to pick for Ice Ice Baby and uh, likely the solo lane, Ice Ice will be playing Susano. I love Susano here because you can have the same sort of control that a Humbats might have been able to introduce. Granted, you're not going to be able to cover as wide of an area, but just having that massive tornado come sweeping through a yeah. team fight can cause so much chaos and even just disorient obey. I think that's really going to be the theme here for Rival. They just want to cause as much chaos as possible. A lot of their team composition doesn't have the greatest amount of control, but the CC when it does happen should be pretty effective in securing the kill. Right at Tasker will be the jungle of choice for obey, I think. Hell coming through here as well to match the healing of Team Rival. They've got Ra and Obey will pick up the Hell. Ymir last pick for Rival. Love that selection. I think that might be a solo lane, Ymir. We'll see where and when that winds up. But this Hell, is this support or solo Hell? I would have to favor this for being a support Hell. It's something that isn't uncommon to be seen in the support role. But then again, with it being Raffer, it's... That it's a hard call to make just because Raffer loves playing aggressive and it, he's not uh, unfamiliar with playing these more assassin warrior S type gods in the support role. I mean, Sir Ket, Nija, Thanatos, we've seen it all in the past for Raffer. I think my favorite would be if Nuwa wound up at the solo lane, Hell in the mid, and Kakul in support. I don't think that's going to happen with Pretty Prime though. I think we will see the, the Nuwa on Pretty Prime, but ain't no use in guessing when we've got the game right in front of us. Aggro, bring it to us. Uh, that's what we were just talking about, Tom, whether or not it was going to be that Kakullin support 
or a solo lane. I totally, I, I get it. Kakullin support, flavor of the yep. month, whatever in Europe. Zelia is a beast Kakullin. It's his best warrior, but keep just, in mind, just give it to him. His past though, he's played mages in the solo lane before. He's sure. played Isis before in the yep. solo lane. He's played hell before. You're I right. think we're actually gonna see some spice between the support and the solo lane. And the way Trickstank was piloting that Kakullin in the previous set, I think that easily Raffer can do the same thing here. Could wait and see. We're gonna have to wait and see until we get into game, but you don't have to wait into game for you to vote on who you think is going to win this one. Is there going to be a game three? Will Rival be able to pull out a 2-0 victory? Going to have to wait and see on that one as well. So here you go. Game two, Obey need to win it in order to extend this best of three. Nuwa on the mid lane is a god that we didn't see at all towards the end of season four. What happened to really bring her back into the forefront? She got second picked here, Tolly. I think it was a little bit of a change to the AI minions between season four and season five. Just better items. Soul Gem Soul comes Gem. to mind. Yep. That's another great one to allow her to be more useful and impactful. She has great lockdown between her root between her clay golem stun. People forget that that shreds a lot of magical protections getting hit by those clay golems. I think at max rank, it's like a cap of 75. I believe it's either 75. We, I don't, I don't remember if that got changed recently or not, but I know it used to be at least 75. Certainly tons of shred on that, on that uh, ability, no matter what, even if it is a little bit less than that. Plus, don't forget, Mage's Blessing means that not a, her, her ult isn't doing 100 damage at rank at rank 1, it's doing 130. It's true. Big deal. Adaraxa gonna get stunned out here. Vote. Not really wanting to allow Raffer to build any range there, not wanting to get hit at all. Callus mm -hmm. with a vote. I think this is a very aggressive duel lane that could certainly pan out for them, but man, if Raffer transforms, it's trouble. And uh, Adaraxia is in trouble now. Sprint popped. Freeze as well. That's going to be first blood. The Kakullin doesn't end up mattering at level one here. Ulur Ymir still pretty good at level one, especially when Vote has the blink. Yeah, look at that, Vote starting off blink, just no fear whatsoever, because if they're the ones forcing the issue in the duel lane, they don't need to worry about using beads for anything, realistically. Like, Kakolin doesn't have any form of CC in his regular Celtic stance. He needs to go into the rage form to get the root, to get the knockback as well. Raffer gets stunned in the middle of the minion wave. He takes a lot of damage, but didn't want to clear any of that minion wave because Ataraxi was coming back. I don't know, totally another reason that I, d I really don't think I like Hell and Soul in here in this instance is because that Cerberus passive means yes. that not only is she just getting anti-healed, but when she heals herself, she's also healing Cerberus. That's very true. That Hell was picked into the Cerberus. It's not as though Team Rival kind of counterpicked this Hell, yeah. right? Uh, it was a nice idea and a nice touch from Obey Alliance there. And Rival even actually banned away Odin themselves, surprisingly enough, but Besides that point, a hell cannot be left unchecked. Doesn't matter if you're mid, solo, support, or otherwise. It needs to not be safely transitioning into that mid to late game because it is a lot of healing. And what Deathwalker you, will certainly go for that pestilence. Look at the Warrior's Blessing here for Zelia in the soul. And one of the one of the things that I think is coolest about Season 5 is these new blessings. So you have to try and decide what you want to do. With uh, if you're going Mage's Blessing or Warrior's Blessing, how do you like the Warrior's Blessing? I mean, rival fans seem to think that it doesn't matter if the hell has Warriors or Mage's Blessing. 72% for rival. You know, it's not as much as Team Dignitas winning the vote. That's true. It was that like was pretty heavy. Two percent, but yeah, rival is certainly looking strong, especially after that first blood. Going back to the topic of discussion of Mage's versus Warrior's Blessing for the hell in particular, it's all about sustaining as long as possible in the laning phase. Yes. The life steal or the anti healing and some of this heal stealing that Deathwalker on the Cerberus can provide makes it more annoying for Zelia playing the hell and getting the Warrior's Blessing. But reducing all those tick damage from Ghastly Breath is going to keep Zelia alive. I feel like we're going to see a lot of that in this oh, lane. Yeah. Zelia just getting bullied by Deathwalker. He heals himself up and he, it's just not helping him because it helps Deathwalker as well. Raffer finds the root on to vote. Vote very low on mana, but Ataraxia too far away to even come close to following up. So despite the uh, early tumble in the dual lane, Raffer and Ataraxia have regained control. Captain Twig coming over to this right-hand side, but instead of ganking, gonna head just 
over to the blue buff. This won't be contested by Rival, but watch out, because that Susano is on the left-hand side. Do they know. I don't really see a war there on the left-hand side, but it's going to be Ice Ice Baby stopping the red buff. Nice blink the pull. Storm Kata actually confirms the steal. They're going to go for a kill, potentially. No, he's going to back off. It's a really smart play by Ice Ice Baby there, using the Susano kit basically perfectly in that situation. Susano, one of those assassins that I, I just love to watch play. Uh, so fluid in his kit and can do so many creative things with it. Anytime Susano is in the meta, I feel that way about a couple different gods. Like on her, I love watching on her get played. Susano kind of fits that same bill as an assassin where so many cool things you can do with the character and really show off just how just how talented you are as an assassin player. A lot of flexibility with the mechanics of those two gods in particular. And I like the idea here between these two junglers, Captain Twig not wanting Zelia to fall behind in this matchup. Gonna sit in that lane, stripped away the enemy blue buff, securing Zelia's own blue. So he's gonna be able to top himself off very frequently. Whereas on the left hand side though, Seems that there's no love here for Ataraxia for Ice Ice Baby. Want to shut him down already with one death. Man, Ymir Uller is, uh, is as kill lane as kill lanes get, basically. It's tough to gank into a, a lane that can honestly win a 2v3. Ataraxia dodges the axe, so the vote going to back up. Collis is already all the way to his purple buff. He wasn't really interested in any more of that action. Can maybe just let him solo that purple buff down. Oh, no, I'll just pick it up, rather, and head back towards the lane to make sure that they can hit five as soon as possible because Ymir hitting level five is, is a bigger power spike than most Guardians. Oh yeah, that ultimate is going to do so much damage and then the recent changes of getting some damage reduction while you're channeling that ultimate makes it more tanky because usually when you're an immobile Guardian or have an immobile spell such as Ymir, uh, such as the Kabraken, you're looking at also Hades. Hades yeah. There's going to be so many abilities flying your way, so getting that kind of tankiness just from your own kit is going to absorb more abilities, allow the rest of your team to follow up very frequently, and that's something that Vote is going to be leaning on, especially when he has such long-range abilities. Already rival off to a slight lead, but it is pretty slight, only about 500 gold, and yeah, Obey Alliance kind of expecting to lose the early game, I'd imagine. This team composition very late game oriented, at least in mid and solo. Nuwa and Hell take quite a bit of time to ramp up to full effectiveness, but boy, when either of them get there, it gets really, really tough to handle either one of those majors. Especially with a Warlock staff being built here from this Nuwa. I'm expecting a lot of time and farming here. In the soloing, though, a little bit of action. On to Zalia, they're able to survive the initial gank here from Ice Ice Baby. Didn't need to use the purification beads there, so stays safe in the moment to have just able to stay alive, so doesn't need to use his defensive relic at all. Deathwalker still has that ultimate though, so could just use it in a, at a moment's notice. Both soul laners going for some cooldown boots. Not finishing off that Warlock staff quite yet. As into the sky goes Captain Twig through the Cosmos. Raffer baits himself, gets frozen, but Vote is already dead. Great burst from Obey Alliance. Beautiful wall, but Raffer right up and over. It should be transforming any moment now. Ataraxia doesn't even need the help. He finds the double kill, but here comes the rotation. They're trying to find the cleanup kill. Wolfie with a searing pain. Not able to find the kill onto Raffer. Already looking for an opportunity is Ice Ice Baby, but with their abilities off of cooldown here, it's a little bit too risky there. Warcry just for good measure, because he can. He's about to go back into that Celtic form. And Obey Alliance, despite getting first blooded in the first two minute marker, so responding kind with two kills. Yeah, big for Ataraxia to find the double kill there. That's perfect abuse of Vote not having any sort of defensive relic. You go blink early on, especially on a character that doesn't have any innate CC immunity, takes a little bit to get access to his jump. Good rotation from Captain Twig and perfect burst combo from Ataraxia. They, this is the guy I think of when I think of Izanami, and there's a reason why. It's, it's, it has always been very, uh, very consistent with those dark portals. That global pressure from Captain Twig is going to be a big factor for this dual lane. Callus and Vote had the aggressive mindset there, but they didn't consider the possible rotation for Captain Twig. Oh, Twig able to outrange the freeze from Kalas. Kalas has the extra movement speed on the Traveler shoes, but still with the speed buff and the acorn finished off, Twig just a little bit too fast for the young support. So rival now I have to kind of answer back a little bit. And again, I, I don't. if I'm on Rival, I don't think I'm willing to just say, ah, oh, we'll just wait it out and play one of our uh, patented 45-minute brawls that Rival seems to really enjoy playing. I, I, I really think that play aggressive is the call. 
And that's exactly what Ice Ice Baby's doing on a pretty prime right now. A gets oh, used, but wall. beautiful wall. Prime no ultimate. Prime nowhere to go. Kalas gets credit, and he deserves it because that wall is what set it up. Nice blink in from Ice Ice Baby as well to set the seal ready, but Kalas assembled the lock. Just so unfortunate. Pretty Prime didn't have his ultimate available. It was still on cooldown for another maybe 10, 15 seconds or so. And without that ultimate, you're not able to buy yourself that five second window of repositioning. And with the changes to Nuwa, something that actually I forgot to mention is her ability to go over player deployable walls. Mm. Ymir wall, you're looking at Odin in particular, and that just allows her to be slightly safer during the early portion of the game. Well, Zelia has actually regained control of this right-hand side for the moment. Still hasn't finished off that Warlock staff, and once he starts stacking that up, is when he'll really start to come into his own as a character in the solo lane. But Deathwalker, the same token, working on that Void Stone. That'll be really important here as well. So as soon as that gets finished off, Deathwalker gets much tankier and does a lot more damage to Zelia. So keep an eye on that matchup in solo lane. That penetration paired up with Ghastly Breath is going to be so annoying for Zelia. It'll be true damage eventually, especially with only 15 magical defense coming from that Warrior's Blessing. Zelia is not going to be having a good time, especially once that Pestilence comes online. That's what I'm expecting is going to be the next item for Deathwalker. Well, Captain Twig's gotten himself a pretty good lead here. Up about a level and a half over Ice Ice Baby. Ice just ticked over to level 9, whereas Captain Twig's been in double digits for quite some time now. He's also finished off his Crusher before Ice Ice Baby has in the jungle. So Ice focused on ganking a little bit, but, I mean, honestly, so has Twig. He had that one impactful gank on the left-hand side. Otherwise, has been farming pretty much exclusively. And that's a pretty good place to be in. If you've got a late-game composition in the mid and in the solo lane, having an early game jungler who gets off to an early good lead is going to be really, really nice to help smooth out your team's overall power curve. But because of the difference in the jungle, you got to look where it's lacking on the other side. And Pretty Prime with that death allows Wolfie, the MVP of game number one, a bit of an edge here. Getting going for a Warlock Staff as well, just now finishing it off. But Pretty Prime capping it off. Last game it was Switch, no? Yeah, I believe so. It was uh, it, Wolfie finished off his Warlock staff first, and Prime went for the boots. This time, you're right, rolls reversed. And it will, uh, again, it, w Rock can kind of get away with it a little more because the extra movement speed, courtesy of his passive. Nuwa gets a little bit of extra movement speed in the fog, but outside of that, man, it's tough. It's Azalea once more pushed under tower, but here comes Twig. Found the back, stun on a Deathwalker, shreds the prots. Deathwalker very low, gonna toss him and then try and bail out. No sprints available for him, and the rotation coming in low from the rest of Rival is enough. Force Captain Twig up into the sky. Great wall again by Kalas. And a freeze means that Captain Twig is not only not chasing the solo laner anymore, but not doing much of anything aggressive. It's going to allow the rival to secure this Pyromancer. Nobody can be in position. Nuwa, Pretty Prime, using the ultimate for Vision. Ice Shards coming out as well. Kalos securing that first objective for rival. Raffer finds two with the knockup, chasing down Wolfie, transforms, and is getting ready to go. Actually uses the f first ability to make sure that he doesn't transform right away. Wolfie does have to A gets out. That fist slam underneath the tier two. Twig is going to fight it, but great snipe from Wolfie. Brings down Raffer in response. A one for one, support for support until Ice will finish off Captain Twig. Jungler on jungler violence means that Obey Alliance de end up down a member at the end of the day. Two for one in Rival's favor. Great patience actually coming out of Raffer, not diving that tier two tower after the Aegis came out from Wolfie. Instead, coming back, using that war cry when it was needed, and hold the phone. Rival are going for another objective. And I don't know, no, Ataraxia has no idea that this is going on. Pretty Prime's on right mids, Ataraxia's on back camps. Rival fairly low, but not low enough to not feel comfortable pulling that Gold Fury. What was a very even game not long ago, Tolly. Now 2,500 in the lead for Rival. The sequence of these events for Rival's favor started with this botched gank attempt onto Deathwalker. And I think that yeah. simply could have been a lot cleaner if Zelia uses the cleanse in preparation for the server's ultimate. That needs to be communicated. Yeah. It, it needs, like, you're expecting, like, what's the only way this player is going to survive? All right. He's going to ulti us away from him and then he's going to run Ooh. away. And that's kind of what happened. So Zelia, instead he did a good thing though by holding his heal after the pull because that gives you that extra movement speed to potentially catch Cerberus. But you could have done both there. Use the cleanse during the ultimate and then heal to catch him. Great point. Ends up with a dropped kill and 
Then the chased kills after that. And right, a task for Twig has to use the ult. Exactly. Or Twig could just use the ult to initiate that fight on the right hand side. And they probably CC chain Death Walker to death. My goodness, that damage. This time, Zalia has the cleanse available. Stop that pull from coming in, but still low on mana, low on HP, and Deathwalker going to run him all the way to base. Force Zalia to lose a wave underneath that tier 1 tower. Also, it could be a leveling thing for Zalia. I think he was level 11 at the time. Normally, a lot of Hells will ignore the second and the fourth ability. Hold that thought, though, because Twig will now use the ultimate on Deathwalker. Thorns there, but it's not going to be enough. Zalia just barely survives. Captain Twig will use the ultimate as the initiation that time. And what do you know? Results in a kill. Also had help from Pretty Prime. He's done a good job of using that Nuwa ultimate just to get himself some extra gold and XP. Using Fire Shards to just collect assists in the early game is ideal situation basically every single time. It just accelerates her towards that late game where she really wants to be. Taking multiple members from Obey Alliance to take down the Hound of Hell. Hades certainly not happy about that one. Rival though still in a good spot. With a com not a commanding lead, but a 2,000 goal lead at the 14 minute mark is a comfortable lead. They can certainly play off of it a little bit further and uh, invest this gold lead into some more vision once these uh, next gold fear respawns in 2 minute 40 time. Yeah, the XP is basically the same, so no lead there as Kalas actually walls Raffer away from the mid harpies. And Kalas has been on point with those ice walls so far in this one. 2,000 gold lead, as you mentioned, really ends up being more about vision than anything else. 2,000 gold spread across an entire team isn't enough to get you a big item or anything like that most of the time. It just lets you get your vision, which should in theory allow you to pull more objectives, find the invades, pick off an enemy member, something along those lines that can actually make your lead start to come to fruition. Azalea actually joining up in the mid lane now. Kalas is level 12, but hasn't backed for a second relic yet. Whereas Raffer sitting only at level 11, so pretty even in the relics department right now for each side. Could be a really risky timing to force the fight here. So many members are stacking up their Warlock staff, but Cal is forced to retreat. Took a lot of damage. Oh, see ya. Wolfie finds the kill. You know he's going to hit that one. No Aegis available for Captain Twig. Has the Thorns instead. Just tanked up that tower a little bit longer than I think he really wanted to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Cal is doing a great job baiting himself out there. Still trying to finish stacking that Gauntlet of Thieves. And the, re the reason why I was surprised that Zelia made this rotation is because he's still sitting at 41 Warlock Staff Stacks. When you're investing into this like mid to late game item, normally you're still farming in that solo lane. But without a Tier 1 tower from Rival... You don't want to overextend to get that next wave. You're going to put yourself in a really awkward position. Ice Ice Baby lurking in the enemy jungle. He's really just hoping that the enemy speed buff was going to spawn right as he wanted it to. Unfortunately, didn't go his way, but did get an XP camp for his troubles. Thought he might kind of collapse around Zalia right there, but ended up being able to escape both uh, two ships passing silently in the night. 16 minutes into the game, I still believe that Rival are in a comfortable position to go for this next goal fury within 40 seconds. I think that Kallus is going to be that initiating factor of who is he going to catch out with his walls. The Ymir being picked up there. Last pick actually out of Rifle has been doing so much work for them. Now, not necessarily in the scoreline, only sitting at 1, 2, and 2, but you know, forcing a defensive ultimate from Captain Twig, enabling that first blood to vote is a good spot. Yeah, Twig uses the dash aggressively, and the rest of Rival come knocking. They knock down Captain Twig. He's sitting for 35. That means Rival gets a chance at this Pyromancer. A couple ultimates used. Secure it for Rival Typhoon and Shards of Ice were the necessities there. Ataraxia loses his Magi's bubble, courtesy of an axe from Vote. Both Hunters. This feels wrong to see Hunters with Magi's bubbles this early on in the game, Toya. Well, I don't like it. Both of these Hunters don't have CC immunity, so it makes sense. But yeah, I'm not a big fan of it either. I like more team fighting presence gods that has the impact right on her as well with a Desert Fury giving him that CC immunity every 75 seconds. It's all about self-preservation. If you're forced to go into Mad Guys busting, then why even choose that god? Raffer hits the knockup onto Kalas, interrupts the freeze. Now jukes the freeze as Kalas should be the target because he's got nothing. Deathwalker used the ult, but that time cleansed away by Zalian nicely. And Rival just has to reset for the moment as Obey heads back towards the Gold Fury. Captain Twig is now respawned, has everything available, including that ultimate, but Wolfie has snipe available as well. Watch out.
for the mid lane mage. Gold Fury down to about half HP reset now as they're looking for Deathwalker, who is rooted in place. Snipe this time on Azalea, not for the objective. But that's not the target because they've got the, the healing. Pull. Nice two-man pull there by Ice Ice Baby, but still not enough. Twig frozen, has to use a purification beat despite the cleanse. Gets stunned out by Deathwalker in response. But a whole lot of a, a whole lot of a do about nothing until Vote comes in with a blink and will finish off Captain Twig. I didn't even see the flank coming from the Hunter, and neither did Obey Alliance. An easy pick, but still feeling very confident because of Zalia's healing from this hell, topping everyone else up from Obey Alliance. Rival, not with an entirely full health pool, a little bit low when the mana department was wolfy. Had to back to the fountain, picking up some items here as well, working on a penetration item after Divine Ruin. And it's in a good position now for Team Rival to maybe force this goal here. Ten seconds respawning is Captain Twig. Man, Twig has uh, ha had a great start to this game. Found the double assist to allow Anoraxia to get a big double kill early on, but has struggled since. Kalos smells something fishy and goes to check the Gold Fury. Sure enough, that's exactly where Obey Alliance are. Tries to wall, but gets broken by the Gold Fury. Obey Alliance actually secure that Gold Fury. I thought it got stolen, but somehow the gold goes Obey's way, but now they've got to disengage. Deathwalker doesn't want to let it happen, but can't find the stun with the Cerberus. So Obey Alliance rip away a Gold Fury. That's the that was the attempt of pulling out the table the tablecloth without messing up any of the got it. anything on top. And Obey Alliance, like true magicians, make it work. But they do lose their tier one tower in response. And I wonder what if Rival is going to go for fire next. You know, all the wine glasses didn't break, but one yeah. of them just kind of fell on its side on the table there with that tier one tower falling. But Rival feeling confident and going for this fire giant. Wolfie, though, doesn't have his ultimate to secure this. Twig up into the sky as a deterrent to make sure that Rival doesn't feel too comfortable in going for it. Deathwalker able to jump away to make sure he doesn't get knocked up by that Rattatos Geralt. Rat forgot it's stuck in no man's land now, has the thorns, but it does not get a matter. Just cut off entirely. A three-man stun's too late from Pretty Prime because Vote has already cleaned up Raffer. And here comes that raw sustain, man. This is exactly what we saw before. Blink. Blink in from Ice Ice Baby. Alt a little bit off the mark. And Nuwa able to get up and over that wall, as you mentioned. Raffer already dead, but Kalas is low on the backhand side. But Wolfie and the rest of rivaled his group and punished Captain Twig twice now that a member of Obey Alliance has just been completely isolated. Frontline and backline of Obey Alliance are disconnected right there. Pretty Prime wanted to continue, but the rest of the Obey Alliance squad wanted to heal off of Zelia. Pretty Prime was forced to retreat, go into the shards just to escape that Ymir wall, which has been such a big factor for Rival. Every, almost everybody from Obey Alliance has to play around this wall. Captain Twig and, and Raffer just have not had the games they probably wanted to. 0, 2, and 3 for Raffer. 2, 5, and 2 for Captain Twig. But all things considered, remember how that started. Rival go to, towards the Fire Giant after getting a Tier 1 tower in mid. And they were trying to burn it down. So Obey Alliance lose two members, but they do stop the objective from going the way of Team Rival, though. If we're being honest Ooh, with each other, this I'm could pretty be sure. bad. This could be really bad for Obey Alliance here. Nice cleanse from Zelia, And it was Ice Eyes Baby forced to move to the left to avoid the potential clay golem stun from Pretty Prime. However, still going to enable Rival to get this tier 1 tower in the solo lane, extending their lead ever so slightly. Kalas has picked up an upgraded Ankh on this Ymir. Love this item. So good into the healing compositions. As soon as Hell pops that heal, Kalas responds with the Ankh. means that not only is that healing going to be reduced wholly, but everyone who got hit by it He's going to be taking increased damage from all sources in a pretty substantial amount. 20% to be exact. Raffer getting freezed by Kallus, slowed from the ice carpet after the fact. The rest of Rival, though, are more worried about what Adaraxia and Pretty Prime are kind of dealing with around that r blue buff side. Nice little slow coming out of Zelia. That's going to be an important factor in these late game team fights. Once that ability gets maxed out, that slow percentage increases. The magical uh, protection debuff also increases. Ice Ice Baby has gotten his lead back. Remember, Captain Twig had a slight one earlier. Now it's a two-level lead for Ice Ice Baby as Rival blow up the Pyromancer faster than Obey can really respond. Another objective goes Rival's way. Now up about 6,000 gold, only 22 minutes in. A little bit more action early on than what we had in game number one between these two squads, but that's to be expected. The European meta has always been a little bit slower, a little bit more calculated than some of their NA counterparts. More and methodical. Exactly. Fire Giant actually pulled now by Team Rival. Brought it down to about 75%. Someone 
from Obey Alliance has got to catch wind of this. Raffer trying to come around. Fire Giant down to about 50%. Two-man freeze there from Kalas. His rival decide they might want to just drop the objective and go for the fight because Zelia gets stunned out. Now on the run. Captain Twig up in the sky trying to deter the rest of rival from chasing. Raffer, meanwhile, was all the way in the back by himself. Wolfie punishes him, but Wolfie gets punished himself. Captain Twig going to be able to clean that one up. No relics available for the mid-mage. Vote answers back on the Twig. A two for one so far for Rival. But it's Alia healing everybody up. The movement speed is there. Ataraxia leading the charge, using that escape to cut the distance. The rest of Rival are too far away to find any return kills. The problem here is who is going to tank the Fire Giant for Obey if they decide to go on it? They definitely have the health pool advantage, but they just don't have the front line to tank. You know, no ultimates either. I mean, Zelia's got the diamond, but remember, he's a stand switcher. No true ultimate for hell, so that doesn't really matter. On the other side, not a lot of ultimates available for rival either, but still had the numbers advantage, so Obey come out okay on the fight, but don't end up getting anything off the back of it. Not even that weakened tier 1 tower in the mid lane. Instead, they decide to spread out and go their separate ways. Obey, there are a lot of questions coming in surrounding this squad and, of course, Energy Squad. Raffer and Emilzi swapping support roles in Season 5, swapping teams, and who was going to do better, who was going to look more comfortable. Raffer definitely seems to be a little bit disconnected from the rest of Obey right now. There's, they're just playing Rival's game instead of their own game, it seems. Between the way Rival started the game with an early first blood onto Ataraxia, that could definitely play a toll on uh, not only him mentally, but the rest of the team. And that's something that Rival been kind of abusing, I think, throughout the rest of the course. Going for this Ymir last pick for Kallus is not something that he's known for, actually, at all in his SPL career. More along the lines of the Fafnir, the more damaging. But then you're looking at Ares as well. So switching things up with the Ymir just goes to show that he's still maturing in his SPL career. Man, if you're playing support in Europe, you better have Ymir in the god pool. They love this pick. Raffer doesn't love how much damage he's taking right now. He's already very low. So is Wolfie, though, as Captain Twig looks to finish off the mid-mage for rival, but can't quite do so. Raffer forced to back up for the moment, but again, has that pocket healer in Zelia. Rival Thinking about continuing to go forward, watch out for votes. So anytime he's sitting in that axe stance, he's hunting, because my man still has that blink that he picked up at level one. Ice Ice Baby off the mark with the Wind Siphon. Heal for heal. Raw versus the Hell. Very traditional old school season zero, where both teams were kind of be looking for the healer and try to ban away the other, and looking at a lot of healing here for both sides. In the five digit mark, Cal has taken more than half of his health. He's forced to retreat, but it's Raffer that's going to meet him. Wolfie with the ultimate, not really going to hit anybody. And the Typhoon, but now the Torment comes through, and that's going to be enough. Finally, Raffer gets isolated and brought down again, just in a different spot that Obey seems to be ready for. Axe off the mark there from Vote, but already it's a 5v4 and a, still one ultimate up on the side of Team Rival. That Shards of Ice for Ymir, pretty good ult. Let's try and secure the Fire Giant if they choose to go for it. Zelia caught out though. Nice stun there from Pretty Prime. And that might be enough to turn it around. Captain Twig gonna find Ice Ice Baby. Walled off is Twig and he will pay for it. Man, these walls have been so oppressive to what Obey really want to do. They just, they can't move around the jungle, Tolly. No, but they're still holding on because of all the sustain from Zelia. Every sort of damage that's coming from Rival is being almost negated right away by Zelia. Over 15,000 healing for the Hell solo lane, or almost 16,000. And coming close is Wolfie as well, right behind him there. And I think that the longer this game goes, it's gonna be who kills the other healer first. And that's something that Obey is trying to do. They're diving out Wolfie in that first engagement in the mid lane, where Raffer went in, took a lot of damage. Captain Twig followed up, couldn't really lock him down, but they're definitely not gonna stop trying here. No, not at all. And Soul Gem is done now for Pretty Prime. That's pretty important. That's really amplifies his burst significantly on that Fire Shards. That extra 40% will spread for everybody. That counts for everyone who gets hit by the ability. So certainly a worthwhile pickup on Tanuwa. So now working towards what could be a, a Chronos Pendant to just get more ultimates off and more shreds with the Clay Golems or... Could be Rod of Tahuti. The new Rod of Tahuti passive so good on Nuwa. You do extra damage to anyone below 50%. That's true. Nuwa ultimate in the late game used often to finish off low health targets. Man, the Rod works beautifully with that. May end up seeing him just going for both in this situation, honestly. It's very possible. Still having one more slot after completing whatever this lost artifact upgrade will be. Another objective for Rival. The 27 minute mark. The Pyromancer going down. 
almost amounting to a 10,000 gold lead. It's been a slow and steady bleed coming out from the black and purple, not really allowing Obey Alliance any sort of momentum. Not really. I mean, they've Obey's gotten a lot more kills this time around. Six to their one they had in game number one, but still over double for Rival in the kills department. Raffer needs to be wary of his positioning, but realizes that everyone's coming for him. Ataraxi gets poked out a little bit, but again, Zelia there, so not going to be too impactful on the poke damage. Rival has been trying to pull his fire giant for what feels like 10 minutes now, but just has been unable to do so. Obey has lost members time after time trying to go in there and stop it, but they have successfully stopped it every time. It's tricky, though, because both teams have advantages and disadvantage in these chokeholds. We saw in the last encounter how Pretty Prime got a sick clay golem stun yeah. around that blue buff chokehold. But then on the flip side, if Obey Alliance continued to move forward, they're going to get walled off by Callus. Well, Rival has tons of vision control, and that makes them feel comfortable enough to pull the FG down to 50% yet again. But again, Rival waffling on if they actually want to finish it. Deathwalker goes in, finds a couple with the knockup, but immediately cleansed away. Pretty Prime up to the sky and the fire shards is go up goes Twig as well. Try and follow. Zelia very low, but so is Wolfie on the backside, about half HP. But again, Raffer separated from the rest of the team and punished for it. His fifth death. And this time, Rival might feel like they have enough to go for FG. Obeyed is, is out of there, man. They, they scram as soon as that fight doesn't go their way. And now Rival will head towards Fire Giant. Looks like Obey might try and pick up a Gold Fury in response, but finally, Fire Giant goes down in Rival's favor. 29 minutes into the game, it was a long Fire Giant dance for both squads, yeah. but it's going to take one Celtic boy to force something for Rival's way, and with that, it's a 12,000 gold lead now for a Rival here, finishing off a lot of these six slotted soon after selling some of their blessings. Vote. Hasn't really done a lot of player damage this game necessarily, but with this full build, he's the reason actually that Rafa is falling very quickly. Plenty of penetration in that build between the Crusher and the Executioner. You got plenty of damage between the Transcendence, the Crusher, the Chin Size. Got it. basically everything you need as a Hunter. And then a little bit of defense as well with that Magi's Blessing. Ataraxia still waiting to finish off his sixth item. Don't think Crusher is necessarily the call for Ataraxia. It's only going to proc on his two and his ult. So probably not your best option as a hunter, but it is still power, pen, and attack speed. So never never an awful call for a hunter to pick that up that item, even if their abilities aren't going to be doing the majority of their damage. So something we don't really see very often, especially on junglers, is what Ice Eyes Baby picked up as his last slot. This Runic Shield is going to be so helpful to negate the damage from not only Pretty Prime, but also Zelia. Not only does it give you that 50 magical protection, but now you're also reducing the magical power of any surrounding enemies by 50. So that's a 100 damage swing onto yourself. And not only are you stopping their power, but you're also stopping some of that healing. The healing is scaling off yep. of Zelia's magical power. You take 50 away from that. And that means each heal is less impactful. It's going to make your life a lot easier on that push. Emperor's Armor now done for Kalas. That's going to make sieging a little bit easier for the rival boys. As soon as he steps into tower range, you'll see those little effects go on whatever structure rival wants to kill. And their attack speed is getting slowed down. Excellent item for the mid to late game. And it looks like he might be going for a Rod of Asclepius there in that six item slot. I love this item in healer composition situations, especially whenever you're not forcing your mid mage to grab it. This allows Wolfie to pick up a Soul Reaver in this last item slot. Whatever he wants, basically a Kronos Pendant, something to augment that damage a little bit more. Gives you health, gives you some movement speed as well. So Kalas isn't completely throwing away an item slot where he's not going to be tanky. It just lets him make sure that that healing is going to be more impactful whenever all of rival groups together. Even selling his boost now, trying to finish off what might be a winged blade, could even be potentially a relic dagger if he wants to get off more cursed onks, more sprints as well, because relic dagger still provides you with some movement speed. It, has, it yeah, is going to be, be the winged blade, though. Either one, I think, is, is probably pretty good there. In this situation, Wolfie's able to sell his Mage's Blessing for a Spirit Robe to make sure that he doesn't get blown up. I like this option. See, late game damage options or defense options for these late for these carries, I'm cool with. You know, you got to make sure that you stay alive. I get it. I just don't. It's the third item thing that I'm not. I'm oh, the, not all about. the early I, I'm guys. still stuck on it, Tolly. I just I can't get over it, man. I'm sure you can have a Twitter debate with Adoraxia after this set. I'm sure I will, and I look forward to it. Nate's always a fun guy to debate with, even when. I usually end up being wrong in the end. I can I can take that. Kalas charging up the mid lane, freezes out Raffer. 
but gets cleansed by Zelia. Puts that cleanse on cooldown for a little bit, though. Not a ton of CDR in Zelia's build, actually, now that I look at it. Actually, only a 10% from the Shoes of Focus has been really trying to make sure that he could stay alive with a Sclepius of his own, even a Heartward Amulet give himself some extra HP and magical protection. Considering that Raffer did not go for this aura, he opted for the sovereignty instead. MP5 goes well with the hell, right? You're trying to spam your ability, so the more MP5 you have, the more heals you get off, the more your team gets topped off. But Fire Giant buff is about to fade away in five seconds for Rival. They have yet to acquire a Phoenix. I'm not sure if they're going to go for this one or if they're trying to bait out some relics. Not a lot of blanks, only Susano and Uller with them on the side of Rival, so your initiators aren't going to be blinking in necessarily, though wouldn't be surprised to see Vote try and be an initiator of his own on his left-hand side. Dealing with Pretty Prime, poked him down to about two-thirds HP, but not enough to bring him down quite yet. That Lost Artifact did end up turning into a Kronos Pendant, by the way, so Pretty Prime more focused on the CDR in the build than necessarily the power. Vote has a lot of safe timing windows on the left side to split push here because there's no blinks on the side of Obey Alliance. The only thing that Vote has to worry about is this global Ratatasker ultimate, which can be seen from a distance. And if Vote's going to get ulti there, then allows the rest of Rival to breathe easier. Wolfie's not going to be the target of choice then for the Ratatasker. Well, yes, now with Fire Giant completely off the table for Rival. They're going to retreat here, set up for the next buff, respawning right now. Now, it looks like another late-game Gauntlet of Thebes pickup for Raffer. And it, again, we usually you want to pick up this item early so you can get the stacks, have it stacked up for the mid-game, and be very it becomes very effective. But in the late game, when you purchase it, it is a big burst of HP, and you're getting a, you're getting protections for every single minion that gets killed around you. And when you're sitting underneath your Phoenix in the late game, you've got waves coming every single lane at you very quickly. So he's already able to stack it up for fairly fast, but... Still, uh, I, I really feel like if you're going Gauntlet of Thieves, you got to pick it up a little bit earlier. It has to be earlier because for 2,400 gold, you're only getting 200 health and 15 HP 5 without the stacks intact. And it's going to take quite a long time to get all 50 stacks here. Cal is prioritizing this item here, getting it a lot earlier on. So he has the aura completed. He has that extra protections for his teammates. And, I mean, that's a huge difference. I agree with you, but at the same time, Raffer's already done. He just purchased this, and he already finished it off. He was able to get, you know, stacks left and right all over the place very, very quickly. So, at the end of the day, it, you know, do I want my supports buying Gauntlet of Thieves' fifth item? Absolutely not under any circumstances. But Raffer makes it work, at least in this one. Well, that could have been also the difference, potentially, of surviving some of those earlier skirmishes. He already sure. has five deaths there. Over 33% of the deaths from Obey Alliance are from Raffer alone. Now, that's a typical thing out of your support, but you normally want to get something out of the deaths. And I don't think Obey Alliance certainly gotten much objectives, if any, actually. They only stripped away one tier one tower. Captain Twig going for the pretty patented tanky Twig builds. He picks up an Emperor's Armor of his own to try and counteract the Emperor's Armor on the other side here for Kalos. I don't know. I just feel like uh, assassin itemization is so strong right now mm -hmm. that if Captain Twig is able to build, you know, Heartseeker, Transcendence, Crusher, Brawlers, and then just dunk on Wolfie, as long as he doesn't have Vegas available, that should be a dead raw just about every time. But it's the way that Tech Captain Twig likes to play, and it's proven to be very effective. Deathwalker brought down to about half HP. Fire Shards comes through the team fight and brings everybody from Rival a little bit lower. Prime fairly low as well as Twig is going to go all the way into the back line and immediately turn tail and run. Kalos, no members caught by that wall. And everyone on each side is going to stand around and wait for their healer to do their job. A lot of relics being used from both sides. Still having the blink available, though, for Ice Ice Baby. That's going to be the deciding factor. I'm expecting yeah. him to wait for the cleanse from Zelia before he goes in. Here comes another attempt. Kalos is going to throw out the wall. Stuns out Zelia, actually. Zelia kind of isolated here, but still not brought down quite yet. Good damage coming out from that Odysseus bow on vote. Pulled back in. Wolfie going to bring down Captain Twig. Is that Araxia doing his best to fend off the rest of Rival? This is what we're going to see from Rival when they play this raw. They're little engagement, back up and heal. Little engagement, back up and heal. You really need something that can force them to fight you. And 
Without Ratatosker ultimate, I don't really think that's something that Obey has. Jumping on in is the Doggo, the Blink, the Pull, Pretty Prime Force to use the Aegis. Strakata is good. One member gone. Deathwalker's gonna fall in response, but not until Ice Ice Baby gets credited with the double kill onto Ataraxia. Still 35 seconds left on Twig's respawn timer. Left side Phoenix falls. Four members plenty healthy and having some ultimates as well. Rapper and Zelia doing their best with a double freeze. The snipe as well. That'll do it. Team rival 2-0 Obey Alliance and keep their perfect record intact. It was a very clean 2-0 victory, I would say, as well. Obey Alliance didn't really look like the former yesteryear of their performance. I think that Team Rival are looking like their second place defending uh, Worlds. I'll say, I can't wait to see Rival versus Dig. I can't wait to see what Dig is going to do up next up against Obey, but we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. We still got to break down what happened in this one. Obey Alliance end up dropping it. Rival 2-0. Who was the MVP? That's our question for you. Make sure you vote in the chat. Can Kalos get an MVP already? My man killed it in game one. He killed it in game two. Where's the support love, chat? Come on. I don't know, honestly. Kalos definitely play lights out the supports. Unfortunately, don't receive a lot of the limelight. I'm expecting potentially this time it could be Ice Ice Baby. Could be. It could be anyone on Rival. When you 2-0 a team as good as Obey, you gotta have everyone firing on all cylinders and Rival certainly fit that bill. Let's throw it to the desk so they can tell you what happened in this set. Thanks a lot, Anatoly, and of course, Ryan. Fantastic stuff here for one of the teams. I expected so much more out of Raffer's Obey, but instead we get Raffer dying, I mean, I think five or six times in game number two. Didn't have a great game in number one either. Raffer, not enough for Obey to find their uh, lift above Team Rival here. But Taco, the question I have to ask you is, was it Raffer or Obey at large? Because I think it was the second. I would never want to play singular blame onto one particular player in these sort of circumstances. I think that while Raffer did tend to take the brunt of the focus, I, not necessarily even focus, it's just a lot of the damage is being handled towards him, and that's just being punished for trying to go for that Kakolin support and not getting that early game lead that you're looking for, and ultimately just becoming a victim of the draft. He's kind of just trapped inside of all of this because the setup that we saw from Kalos on numerous occasions with these Cerberus ultimates and stuns really just prevented Raffer from trying to get anything done. Exactly. That, that That's the key here. That is, despite the fact that Raffer is the, the new support, the new player here, I think this was just more indicative of the strategy that Obey tried to bring out, which unfortunately for them and their fans fell short against the purple, and Agro gets his wish for some reason. Kalos is the MVP. No shade towards Kalos, just ultimate shade toward Agro. 2-2-15! Two, two, That's a nice slash line for support, and I want to give a special shout-out to John Finch. Ymir's doing well, huh? Amir is doing pretty well, but I, I gotta say, again, it was just a lot of counteract to that initial engage off of Obey's draft because they had a kind of similar strategy, I feel, to game one of Rival, what they were doing, where they were just mostly interested in just trying to get that initial burst damage, and if everybody's killing you at the same time, then you never have to worry about our lack of defenses. So for Obey, I, I like the mentality here with the Hell trying to match some of that raw sustain by their own healer. It, it just never really came into the limelight as well as what we saw from Wolfie's Raw, kind of just getting punished more often than not because of how heavily Obey was behind so early on. Here's my thing. Uh, looking forward to the future, we've got one more game for you. It's going to be Obey versus Dignitas. Now, Obey bouncing back here. You know, do you do you think that this is a, a performance that, wow, we're not getting it out of Obey, they're just going to get trounced, or do you think this is something that can bounce back and fight Dig? This is a very motivational loss, I would feel. For Obey to take a hit in this set so early on into the season, that, that's always a rough take for them. This is a team that's been hungry for more since the very beginning, and no pun intended off of their old team. That's, like, that's what 100% intended. It's, a def it's the same thing happened yesterday, and it's, it's really not. No, that's, Ever. you were smooth for once in your life. Taco roughing it up here, but it works out. Don't forget, uh, if the games aren't enough for you at home, you can purchase some stuff as well. Gem sales, 35% off the gem packs for a limited time. That's neat on the screen, by the way. Just just, just letting you know. It'd be a great best at skin. <laughs> well, it's I, neat. I have to say it every single time. The kitty ears always give it away. Signature sign of the perfect gamer girl skin. <laughs>
Well, you can't gamble your gems, but if you're in your Las Vegas, you can gamble whatever you want. But it ain't no gamble to watch the show. It's guaranteed to be a good one. E United versus Space Station Gaming, commentated by our very own Hindu man and guest commentator DM Brandon, live at 845 Eastern, 545 Pacific tonight. Definitely want to keep an eye on that one. Because like I said, this is going to be a good one. Not an SPL match officially, just 15000 bucks for a single game of Smite. Barracuda versus the defending world champs couldn't ask for a better setup. Later on, like I said, in just a couple of minutes, we're going to see Obey Alliance take on Dignitas. We'll see if they can bounce back or if they remain the same as they did in match two. We'll be right back. Come and 